Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three, the final part for today. It's June 20th, 2012. My name is Darko, or my handle, I guess, online handle. Um, you can check out my website, it's ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, ddarko2012 and ddarko2013, and my YouTube channels. I usually have all the headlines and links in YouTube's video description, but like I said in the first video, they're not gonna be there until further notice, so. Also, these uh, last two videos, part two and part three, might be uploaded tomorrow on the 21st, uh, just because my internet's been fucked with today. Um, it leaves it on just long enough to while I encode and upload my video, and then, oh, it just disconnects it for, for about 15 seconds, just along so that uh, uh, these uploads are failing, so. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm done earlier, you know? It's 10.30 local time for me, usually I get done around midnight. I don't know, you know, but uh, just really uh, coincidental things, right? So, all right, so hopefully this will get out to you, and I'm going to cover the war on terror, liberty, sovereignty, basically global politics and stuff like that, the wars. Powder keg, largest joint exercise in Middle East history. Troops, tanks, planes, and even Russian nuclear subs. So Iran, Syria, Russia, and China are planning the biggest ever war games in the Middle East, according to an unconfirmed report. So this is going around the Internet, a lot of stuff going around the Internet. I'm not going to put my name on it and say that it's actually 100% fact. But I like to put this stuff out there just so that you can try to put the pieces together yourself as well. And that's what I like to do with the links, but you know, like I said, just... You know, uh, hopefully we can get back to that eventually. On the semi-official Iranian news site, Fars News, according to the article, the four countries are preparing 90,000 troops, 400 aircraft, and 1,000 tanks for the massive joint maneuvers which are to take place along the Syrian coast within the month. The report states that Russian atomic submarines and warships, aircraft carriers, and mine-clearing destroyers, as well as Iranian battleships and submarines, will also arrive in Syria, and that Egypt has agreed to let 12 Chinese warships Across the Suez uh, Canal for exercises. So it says here that the IDF spokesman uh, called the report a political matter and declined to comment. So, and it goes on. It basically, says uh, there's they're currently holding talks with uh, the six powers that are over nuclear program. Well, they basically fell apart. So in Moscow, then we have U.S. plans surge in uh, military presence across the Middle East following the forced withdrawal of troops from Iraq. Washington is trying desperately to maintain regional, regional uh, hegemony. It says the U.S. is planning to maintain a significant military presence in the Middle East going forward, including 13,000 U.S. troops in Kuwait to help maintain um, their, basically, their, inf their influence or their power over the region, according to a new congressional report released on Tuesday. Defense Secretary Panetta said he envisioned about 40,000 troops stationed in the Middle East region following the reluctant withdrawal of Iraq or from Iraq. The U.S. is also cutting the military presence in Europe, having about 68,000 going forward. Obama is also in the process of surging U.S. military presence in Asia Pacific. All right, so another article that I found besides this story, which I've already covered, U.S. Jordan Special Operations Exercise to involve 12,000 troops. Um, this is from May 9th, so that's right. And this is right on Syria's border. It was called Eager Line 2012, so 